A movement is often started from the passion of one person. Gina from Gina is on a Roll has come to be respected as the heart of bringing together the disability community and advocacy in her local area. But through her transparent sharing of herself on social media, many beyond her local community have come to love her and seek her for new information and connection. But before we jump in, I wanna remind you to please subscribe and share this with any friends that you think will benefit. And if you'd like to get in deeper conversation with me, join my private Facebook group at Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us financially at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with the disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Gina, founder of Gina is on a Roll, is a social media platform in which Gina shares herself so freely and transparently in order to bring connection and information to the disability community. Thank you, Gina, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I would like to just start out by allowing our audience to get to know you. Uh, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, that would be awesome. I am 34 years old. I live in the Phoenix, Arizona metro area, so just outside of Phoenix. I have been in a wheelchair for almost 17 years. I'm actually a C56 quadriplegic complete, so that means I have no fine motor and I'm paralyzed from the breast vein breast line down, and I am a full-time wheelchair user. I graduated from college with a political science degree and a Juris Doctor, so my passion is definitely politics and advocacy and anything that has to do with government. Um, I am quite an independent lady, and I really love to travel as far as work um, that pays the bills. I do a lot of real estate development and investing, so I've got some freedom to do advocacy in the meantime, and that's, that's my passion project. Um, Gina, Gina is on a roll I found on Facebook. Is it primarily living on Facebook? Facebook's a great platform, especially for disability advocacy. And what was your motivation or inspiration behind Gina is on a roll? Getting all my damn rights trampled on. <laughs> I'm like, if it's happening to me, it's happening to everyone else. So I think by me feeling frustrations, I guess, then, yeah, how did it happen? Frustration. Um, and I wanted to share with people, like, here's my, here's the knowledge that I got from such an amazing opportunity in an education that most people don't get. I can easily share that. There was no reason why I shouldn't. So I just felt like it was an obligation. Mm, nice. And I know you are very active in your local area. What are some activities yeah. that you participate in or organize for right. the local disability community? Every month I actually host a gathering when we're not quarantined on P for people with disabilities. And that's all disabilities. It's not just wheelchair users. Anyone with a disability is welcome to come to the events. I host the event. We drink, we eat, we be merry, we laugh, we talk about what catheters use. No, I mean, you know, but like it's conversations that you don't get to openly freely have with like other people. Like there's just something great about getting together with somebody that has a disability. We really get each other. We really do. You know, there's just such an incredible camaraderie. So for me, that's kind of my passion, you know, getting out there, talking to legislators, politicians. I do that on my own, on my side, uh, on the side. I get together with politicians or I write them, I email, I you know, converse back and forth about how can we make things better. But what I do for the community, we need like camaraderie. You know, we're, we're so disjointed and so fractionalized with, like you were talking about, earlier when we were having a conversation, you know, on the side about every, you know, what is accessible because every disability is just so different. So I think that doing those things to bring people together is what we need because it's hard. I mean, it's 
it's hard to understand somebody else that has a completely different type of disability and we don't realize how much we can help each other until we meet the other person. I love how you have um, taken your local community and brought them together, but then you've translated that, translated that into social media. And um, I could go on, Gina is on a roll page right now, and a lot of things that you post will have comments from people all over the country, if not world. And the comments are mind blowing and they're from everywhere. And it's because people with disabilities are living everywhere and they all care about these topics that like, I bring up the controversial stuff. You can go ahead and say it too. Let people know. I, I don't tippy toe around anything. Like I like really like, I think the reason I get comments is like I give an opinion. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes is doesn't really flow with what the able-bodied community is comfortable with or what the disabled community co is comfortable with. But I think these conversations are so phenomenal to have. What is that number one viewed video? It was parking related and it was somebody blocking me out of my ramp once again. You know, <laughs> like we're all so used to it. And I couldn't get into my vehicle and I showed people why. It was, I think a lot of people just don't put it together. So the video is very quick. It was like me opening my ramp and trying to get in my car and saying, see, this is why you don't park on the access aisles. And it took off. I remember watching that one and I was like, yes, I love that she did that because I feel like so many of us think it and struggle with it in like on our own. And the fact that you just put it out there, it's like, yes, finally somebody's saying something out loud in public. The one thing that we underestimate is the power of social media, the power of videos, the power of a story, because people are getting to know me and, you know, the people in my town, like all know me and I've noticed people don't park in the access aisles. That's what I want, like an association where it's like you care more than just, oh, it's Joe Blow's grandma that needs a spot. Um, so I think personalizing it and then also sharing other stories of people with disabilities and like what they're doing and exposing like how amazing some people are because for some reason our, our regular media only likes to show the like womp womp pity porn, how great, look at this person who helped a disabled person. Crap, it's not a disabled person helping able-bodied people or children and that you know are in a country that are needing help and there are so many people that i know that are severely disabled that volunteer they do way more they give back to their community so much more than their able-bodied counterparts and i think they're inspirational i hate to say it i hate to say it i know everybody hates the word but like they inspire me they make me want to do better you know and i think like they should be proud of the fact that they're living their lives so selflessly and just so admirably. Like, so I think, you know, those are the stories I want to share. That's a really interesting observation because I never thought about it that way that if you think about it, who runs our media companies, able-bodied people, and 100%. they already have a certain picture and then they're projecting that picture or that's their own picture may not be reality of this person with a disability that needs to receive the help rather than actually offering and contributing something. And what about the fact that we're failing to talk about why these issues exist, these people with disabilities needing help? Why do they need help? We have a social infrastructure that is failing people with disabilities. That's what our problem is. Why don't we talk about the real issue? Let's not talk about the little like, oh, look, we bought this person a wheelchair. Why the hell can this person not get a wheelchair? Right. We're in a very rich country, and yet this person cannot afford, like, why are we making a wheelchair so exp expensive? You have the same amount, the same materials as a bike, and it's going to cost you, even if you go high in bikes, they're going to cost you a quarter of the price. It's insane. It's insane. You know, we're not talking about the real issues. I always tell people, it is expensive to have a disability. My car, uh, my car was $150,000, and it is a soccer mom minivan. It is not. Oh, a, hell yeah. You know, yeah, it's like, three options. Right. And then the wheelchair I had to get for it was $32,000. You know, so it's okay. like. Can people not just take a second and go $150,000? Like, you literally could get a used Ferrari and you could get like a new, new top of the line Tesla. And that car has a way more complicated computing system. That's what's out there. That's what's out there.
people, there are predators. There are so many predators. I think we all live in a world of thinking like, nobody would do that to me because I'm disabled. That is so horrible. Who would do that to a girl in a wheelchair? I mean, you must be Satan. Who would? Oh, those people. Those, they're out there. Same guys that sell us vans for like $80,000. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and the thing is that they're under the impression that every disabled person receives help, public health help. Yes. And that's not yep. always true. There are some of us no. that make a living or above yep. the poverty line and we have to actually pay above a pay out of our pocket. Um, but yeah, I want to get back on track because Let's get back. there are so many issues that we could talk about in terms of uh, what needs advocacy. Like it's endless. We will be here for, you know, 48 hours. It is endless. Yeah. <laughs> so, it is. You're so right. You work in terms of advocacy. That is your passion project. Advocacy in yes. your local area. And you share what's happening in your local area on social media so that perhaps it can help people in their local area. Yes. What is the number one tip? that you would give to people with disabilities that are trying to advocate for systems change? Schedule an appointment with your local representative. If you come in and you tell your story to your representative, your representative is there to help you. So I think what a lot of people don't realize is they're very open, they're very thirsty for good stories that they care about. Um, go in and talk to them about what's going on. If you've got an issue, call them, email them, write them. Don't just get on, give a bad review. Don't get on and like complain on Facebook. Don't like call them. Like I think a big thing that people don't do is just they don't get a hold of their legislators. They don't get a hold of uh, their, the people in power and they're so accessible. That's my tip and do it, do it everyone. Okay, <laughs> I love it. I please, love it. Yeah, please, I'm begging you. <laughs> so let me ask you, are there certain things that you've worked on that you found success with? Yes, um, my like pride and joy for here in Arizona has been I really pushed for like in the state it wasn't it wasn't illegal to park on the access aisles so uh, statewide it just in one or two cities like they had some ordinances I know you would think it's a no parking zone so I really pushed we uh, got it a statewide bill that one for me is like my pride and joy because it just impacts so many people including me. Um, that I care about the most, but really like advocacy wise and like outreach, like I think these groups, like hosting these groups, like that's another thing. Like if you have the ability to like host a really fun group for people with disabilities, like do it. Like you're gonna meet great people. For me, why I do it, one, I love it. I love the people, they're freaking great. I mean, I, I, I crack up, even the ones that are just so difficult, I love, like, cause it just challenges me to like, okay, all right, here we go, you know, ride the wave. But um, for me, I get to find out what their issues are. So like people come, they come to these events, about 15, 20 people, and I always go around and ask like, hey, what's going on? Anyone's having issues, like having problems, like how's life? Like, and he, when there's a common denominator of an issue that is kind of rising up, you'll hear it from more than one person. So like, that's how I kind of determine what issues I want to go after. After like parking's a major one, access to healthcare is what I like often share stuff about. So like that kind of thing, um, that gives you the ability to tap into the community. So I think it's important for us to care outside of ourselves and our own disabilities and our own experiences and learn from other people so i think that is if i were to give people a tip do a gathering like and then write your representative yeah no that, <laughs> those are two great tips and so easy to do well and you know what i i feel like as a person with a disability most i don't see i go i don't go out and see a lot of people with disabilities so it oftentimes yes. feels like you're the only person with a disability with your experience yeah. with your struggle yeah. So creating that community where, like you said earlier, people feel like they get you, yeah. that they understand you is so important. Um, and it's sometimes it doesn't happen so organically. You have to be intentional about creating those yeah. uh, communities so that way people come together and know that it's okay. And Yeah, um, and we have so much fun. You know, when we go out, I think it's kind of empowering for people because we always go out to restaurants. We don't, well, I'm not shy. Listen, I got like a group of like 20 people with severe disabilities. Like 
we got some weird stuff going on, right? I like, like, I like weird. Like, I call myself weird. Like, I'm like, ah, we got some, like, crazy. That's not, like, the norm for people to see. And you should see the people out. They never are judgmental or, re like, they look over and they're like, damn, like, I want to be hanging out with that crew. Like, they're like, yeah, they look over and they're like, cool. Like, and the people that are with us that have more severe, like, visible disabilities, you feel like you're not the only one standing out. You know, mm -hmm. you're not. You know, you fit right in for once. And I actually just feel like a brotherhood and a sisterhood with those people. Like, there's just a closeness. And these people, like, I just love dearly, you know. Like, one of them today, actually, um, it was his breakup back anniversary. Is is 35 years. year. <laughs> so <anniversary>. great. <laughs> Since he broke his back. And I went by and dropped him off a really good rum because uh, he loves rum. And I said, like, you know, being in a wheelchair sucks big sweaty balls. Like, just honestly, you can bleep that out too if you need to. But I said, but you being alive is such a gift to the world. Like, he's such a beautiful human and just such a great person. Like, I think that like having those people around us that like have been through it and understand it, like, you know, we're there for each other. Like we really are. Like, it's just so beautiful. Like, I just think people with disabilities are diamonds in the rough, especially when it comes to dating and stuff. Like I'm always like, it's because they've been hidden. Look what we're up against, you know? Like we don't have people out there willing to say like, this is me, I'm loud, I'm proud, I'm in a wheelchair and you can kiss my ass. You know, that's yeah. not like what we got. Well, we got you. We got you. <laughs> oh, we've got some, you know, I have to say, we have got some incredible women in the community of people. Who Look at yourself, like doing something like this. Like you are a go-getter. I actually think, like I, sorry boys, you got to step it up, but the women are kicking your ass. <laughs> like, no, but like women with disabilities are like, oh, they blow my mind. It's cool to see, and I think it inspired. They inspired me, like you know. Totally. I, I the fact that you bring a group of people with disabilities together, and for you, the viewer who is watching this right now, if you feel inspired to <laughs> to do, do this in your own local area, as Gina has or as I have, know that that also is a form of advocacy. I mean. It's not like, let's have a get together inside someone's home and where we're all still remain hidden. It's like, let's yes. go out in the public at a restaurant because who knows, maybe that restaurant didn't realize, oh, I don't have an accessible bathroom, so I can't serve. Yeah. I just lost money, tons of money yeah. on the food and drink that these group of people would have had and I need to change my ways. Or, you know, it, it, it allows people who are also eating at that same restaurant or in that same park that, wow, look at them. They are just having a great time. And yeah. I want to be a part of that too. And so there are so many ways that even in just getting together and partying it up, that we can have an effect on people and our, you know, local businesses and the systems. 100%. It's a win-win. It really is great. That's awesome. If you serve alcohol, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so is there anything else message that you'd like to impart on our viewers today? Yeah, if I can give you guys one more message, be you. Doesn't matter what your disability is or lack of disability, your body type, you know, what your education is, where you grew up, like, love you, like, feel comfortable with you, like, wake up every morning and ask yourself, are you happy? And if you don't know why you're happy, you're unhappy, like, really try and pinpoint that. I think when people start finding the drive of, like, pursuing their own happiness and, like, really wanting more out of life, then they start there, it gives them the ability to, like, care about others and, like, care about what's going on and care about accessibility. When you start loving yourself, you feel like you deserve access. Um, but the other thing is like really like, you know, I think a lot of people with disabilities just feel like they're not worthy for change. They feel like they're not worthy for like asking their representative and you are so worthy. Oh my gosh, like I can't, every single person, like 
just keep in mind that the entire like Obamacare thing got started by one mom with one child coming into the office of her representative and she changed the entire healthcare system for the United States. So if you think that your voice doesn't matter, think about that. We are so vocal. We are in a world that like you may post a video and it's seen by almost a million people. You never know. You know, it's just, just do it. Stop being at home, stop staying at home and just hiding yourself, you know, just get out and live. Feel worthy, you know, we're all so worthy and people with disabilities, all of them that I've met are just, okay, not all of them, some of them are total douchewads because we're like everyone else, you know, it's like a variety. We're not all saints, we're not all inspirations, we're not all perfect, most of us are. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Actually, I, I, you know, I did say that was going to be the last thing and that would have been, that would be a beautiful note to end on. And I feel like that really is the key to change um, yeah. is yeah. how we present ourselves and how we show up in the world um, to, 100%. Uh, to our, to our fellow friends, to our coworkers, to our state representatives. Like we're a part of this community Yep. And that's why change is important. Amen. Oh, man, that is so true. You know, when I first broke my neck, my mom said to me, she goes, Gina, you don't just represent yourself anymore. You represent every person in a wheelchair. Because a lot of people, you're going to be the first experience they've ever had with somebody that has a severe disability. First time they've ever like had an experience with someone that's a quadriplegic. If you're an asshole. They're going to think that every single one of them is. And I was like... Dang, mom, I was like, I just broke my neck. How much weight are you putting on me? You know, like, eh. she's very funny, but she was right on. She was right on. So that's something we're all carrying a responsibility. If you're a jerk to somebody, they're going to be a jerk to me. Right. You know, like, save us all. That's a big one. You nailed it. Oh, girl, this is so great. Oh, I'm excited. Ah, thank but, you, Gina. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank uh, you. Thank you, Gina, for sharing your huge and contagious personality and passion with us today on Chair Chats in your local community and on social media platform. Gina is on a roll. I would encourage our viewers to go to the Facebook page and subscribe to Gina is on a roll and you'll find some great connection and information there. And I'd love to hear from you. Are you inspired to create and organize a meetup for your local disability community? And what would that look like? Please share with us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and share this episode and other episodes with people that you feel would benefit. Also, if you'd like to get in deeper conversation with me, please join my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed.